Hello folks, welcome to our top five hikes of all time. We should say these are not the top five, five hikes in the world because we've only really been hiking for four or five years, but we have visited some pretty cool places and done some pretty amazing hikes. So this is our top five ever that we've done. Let's start with number five. So number five is in Sintra, Portugal, and it's a route from the Quinta de Regieira to the Castelos dos Muros and then to the Palacia de Pena. This hike is best started with a yummy breakfast in Sintra before heading through the pretty cobblestone streets to the first stop, the Quinta de Regieira. No, you're saying it wrong. It's Quinta de Regieira. Oh, come on. I was pretty close. Anyway, we spent around an hour and a half exploring the Quinta's fascinating gardens. There are references to Freemasonry, the Templars, and the Rose Cross everywhere. The spiral initiation well and all the caves under the gardens are like a Dan Brown novel come to life. Yeah, I thought I'd see Tom Hanks in a tweed jacket in the tunnels. Me too, the caves were awesome. Isn't this a hiking video? Right, and like all great hikes, it has elevation gain. About 200 meters up the hill to the next stop, the Castelos dos Muros. Did I say it right? Yeah, I'll accept it. Phew, the trail to the Moorish castle is beautifully constructed with railings, cobblestone paths, and stairs cut into the rock. There are great viewpoints to take pictures, and even a small cafe to buy water and snacks. Yeah, and we were lucky enough to see rock climbers on one of the cliffs. Yep, plus we got great views of the castle above and the valley below as we hiked this non-technical trail. And there were plenty of good places to take a break. The castle is a ruin that dates back to the 8th century and was built by the Moors to defend the area. It's a great strategic location because you can see both ocean and land routes leading to Lisbon. And the views are epic. But we still had more trail to hike. Yep, the Palacio de Pena, with even more climbing. By the time we were done, we'd gained almost 500 meters over 9 kilometers of hiking. It's worth it to see the palace, though. It was built in the mid-1800s, and it is a real-life fairy tale castle. It's definitely a princess's dream come true, but the gardens are also amazing, and we explored them on our way back down to Sintra. We finished just before dark and rewarded ourselves with a tasty meal before heading back to Lisbon. This is not your typical day hike, it's more of a day trip, but it's truly one of the most unique and beautiful walks we've ever done, which is why it's number 5 on this list. We wish we had more images of the trail itself, since the way it winds through the estates and the hillside is truly amazing. The trail itself is as much of an attraction as the Quinta, Castelo and Palacio. But I should point out that we didn't use the All Trails route, instead we just followed the signage in Sintra from place to place, and we recommend you do the same. Well, that's all for this one. If you liked what you saw, please hit like and subscribe and tune in next week for the wildest hike we've ever done at number four. At number four, Crypt Lake in Waterton National Park, Alberta. We are on the boat. That's right, this one starts with a boat ride at 8.30 a.m. Beware, we booked a day ahead and there weren't many tickets left. The boat dropped us off at the trailhead just before 9 a.m. and we started walking uphill through really dense forest. Then the vegetation thinned out and it became a typical Rockies hike with lots of switchbacks and elevation gain. Yeah, but it doesn't stay a typical hike, does it? More on that later. Eventually, we started to gain enough elevation to get some nice views of Upper Waterton Lake and then the waterfalls started coming fast and furious. The first big one is called Twin Falls, and there was a short side trail that gave us a better view. Then we saw several smaller falls, even one that we had to cross by hopping from rock to rock. We also got a great view of swirling mist falls. Amazing! After that, more climbing with no shade. By the time we'd finished the hike, we'd done 850 meters of elevation gain over 17 kilometers. Then you get your first look at 150 meter high Crypt Falls. Wow! And it's that cliff that makes this hike not a typical Rockies hike, because the trail goes right through the cliff. Yep, we had to walk around 25 meters on a ledge about a foot and a half wide. Then we climbed a ladder that seemed about four feet shorter than it should be to get into a rock tunnel that goes right through the cliff. Once through that tunnel, we then climbed down onto another ledge so we could climb up the cliff with nothing but cables to hang on to. This is where our daughter tapped out, so we headed back through the tunnel to safety while Lilla and Ethan kept going. Going around the cliff was scary thrilling, but totally worth it. I can't believe I actually did it. And Crypt Lake is an amazing payoff. And that's when this happened. Go, Crypt Lake. Just walked a couple of cliffs to get here. I did a bungee jump. I should be able to do this. Oh, 
You want to go in ice, that's what it feels like. I'm sad I didn't get to see the lake, but maybe I caught a break missing out on that swim. Yes, I think you did. Crypt Lake is an awesome hike. It's got a little bit of danger, the boat ride is nice, and the views are spectacular. Some people rank this as the best day hike in Canada, but we picked another Alberta hike that we loved even more, so make sure you tune in next week for number three. And if you liked what you saw, please hit like and subscribe. That's all for this one, see you next week. At number three, in Lake Louise, Alberta, in Banff National Park, it's the Lake Louise to Agnes Lake to the Big Beehive to the Plain of Six Glaciers hike. This hike starts with the iconic postcard view of Lake Louise from the Chateau, but be ready because we had a steep uphill slog through the forest to Mirror Lake, which offered great views of the Big Beehive. Once past Mirror Lake, the trees thinned out and the views started to open up. The start of this hike is not technical at all, but it's a strenuous climb and be warned, we needed bug spray and lots of water to make it comfortable. Just past Mirror Lake, we saw a beautiful waterfall spilling down the mountain. Then a long set of stairs takes you up to Lake Agnes and the first tea house, where you can get drinks and snacks, but beware, they are cash only. After a nice snack, we started the trail around the lake. From this point on, the views were spectacular. It's impossible to take a bad picture with the tea house on one side of the lake and a towering cirque on the other. Next, we started climbing the big beehive. It wasn't technical, but it was very steep and exposed. Not great if you're afraid of heights. Speaking of heights, the big beehive was cliffs on all sides with spectacular views of all three lakes and the surrounding mountains. Then we started descending the other side of the Big Beehive via the Highline Trail. This part of the hike involved switchbacks through dense forest, but thankfully it was not as exposed as the climb up was. As we got closer to the Plain of Six Glaciers Trail, the view really opened up, and the waterfalls started. It seemed as though there was one every two to three hundred meters, and the trail crosses every one of them. But unfortunately, we didn't see glaciers up close yet, just all the gravel they've left behind. The area around the tea house is stunning, with views of Mount Victoria and Mount Lefroy, both among the area's tallest and both over 11,000 feet. The glaciers have receded so much that you'll have to use your imagination and some of the park's Canada signage to imagine how this area looked before climate change really took hold. And I was really surprised how far these mountains are from the lake. I visited the hotel to sightsee several times and never realized that there are several kilometers of valley between Lake Louise and the cliffs. From the chateau, they appear much closer than they really are. Another kilometer up from the tea house revealed what was left of the glaciers. If seeing a glacier is on your bucket list, do it soon, because they are disappearing fast. Plain of six glaciers. Beautiful. And the camera does not even come close to doing it justice. We actually saw the glacier calf. A big chunk broke off and fell down that cliff there. So what's the verdict on this hike? Uh, this one is beautiful, amazing. Love it. This is a tough hike at 21 kilometers with a thousand meters of elevation gain, but it is spectacular and should be on every hiker's bucket list. Believe it or not though, number two was even more spectacular, so tune in next week for that video. And if you liked what you saw, please hit like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. At number two. Vereda do Arieiro to Pico Ruivo in the Portuguese island of Madeira. This is the hike that started it all, folks. We were in Madeira for our son's soccer tournament. We were sightseeing between games, and from the scenic lookout at Pico do Arieiro, Madeira's third highest peak, we saw this amazing sidewalk leading into the mountains. It's a trail that asks you to walk it. So, so far, so good. It has this railing all the way. <laughs> we are. Ways up. I don't know if you can even get the sense of it from the camera, but we're we're two kilometers above sea level, and that's probably a thousand meters down. Estamos numa área de descanso. Atenção. Oh, até tem aqui uma mesa e bancos de pedra. So, it turns out that going up is a little bit harder than going down. It's so hard. Except unless you're Lauren, 
in which case Lauren are you tired yeah. basically this, on a cliff this is pretty amazing <gasps> Hello. I won later the skies were clear and we had some free time so of course we went back and the views were epic but believe it or not we didn't finish the trail either time so Madeira is definitely a place we'll return to. With 3,000 kilometers of trails and several microclimates in an area just a bit bigger than the city of Toronto, mountain views, lush semi-tropical forests and desert-like moonscapes are a short car ride away from any hotel. Madeira is a hiker's paradise. This is just a typical Madeiran scenery. Just your average run-of-the-mill spot in Medina. If you ever wanted to climb onto peaks of mountains, here anybody can do it. You don't have to be in shape. All you gotta be able to do is walk upstairs. They have the railings and everything, and it's amazing. Don't forget, next week we'll reveal our top hike ever. You're watching a few teasers now. Tell us in the comments below which trail you think it is. And if you like what you saw in this video, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. See you next week for number one. And at number one, the Tongariro Alpine, Alpine Crossing. Crossing on the North Island of New Zealand. If you are a Lord of the Rings fan, this Mordor hike past Mount Doom is a must-do. Plus, the Tongariro Alpine Crossing is on National Geographic's list of top day hikes in the world. And what can I say? We loved it so much, it's number one on our list. The boys are in the group up ahead. This is the first and only day hike we've ever done as a guided tour, and we're glad we did it this way, since Tongariro has the highest number of search and rescues in New Zealand due to the additional dangers of mountain hiking in winter. The tour company we went with was Adventure Outdoors, and we highly recommend them for any season. They have amazing guides, provide all the gear you need, and the day is not only an epic hike, but also a super lesson in winter alpine safety. Plus, the director, Sarah Kate, is an awesome communicator. We received great instruction on how to use an ice axe, how to wear and use crampons, and how to safely stop should we lose our footing and start sliding down the mountain. The views on this day were epic. It started out cloudy but the skies cleared, then clouded, then cleared again, so we got amazing pictures in the clouds and of pristine snow under blue skies as well. We split up into two groups, with the boys in the lead group and the girls in the second group. Well, I belonged in the second group, but I volunteered for the first group to keep Ethan company, and then spent the whole day struggling to keep up. Because we were split up, we got some amazing pictures that show the scale of the mountain and the volcanic craters we were crossing. Here's a shot from the top of the crater of the boys crossing. And here's a shot the boys took of us as we slid down into the crater. Intentionally, we didn't fall. Yay, Lauren! Woo! All right, Lauren! Woo! Whee! <laughs> While the sliding was super fun, there was something almost spiritual about being in the south and red crater. We didn't get to see the iconic Emerald Lakes or Blue Lake, but we think the blanket of untouched snow might have been even more breathtaking. Getting up to the top of a mountain and crossing these incredible landscapes is a true blessing. It provides a sense of awe, of peace and of perspective. It's so easy to be present in the moment when the scale of your surroundings is so epic. To quote Bilbo Baggins, I want to see mountains again, mountains, Gandalf. No wonder the Maori hold this place as sacred. Well, we're almost at the end of this one, so it's time to wrap up. This hike is not for the faint of heart. It involves strenuous climbs, icy ledges, and dizzying heights. It's a real adventure, and you feel a major sense of accomplishment at the end. We are so thankful that the weather held and we were able to complete the Tongariro Alpine Crossing in winter. It's a deserving number one on our list of top five hikes ever. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite day hike ever is, as we're always looking for a new adventure. Thanks for watching, please hit like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.